Built with a massive budget of 350 million US dollars, the Millennium Tower of San Francisco is the tallest residential building in San Francisco. But as the days are passing, the skyscraper is both sinking and tilting. Of San Francisco sinking and leaning Millennium Will Tower. this one work? There's now a revised plan to help stop the sinking, sinking and leaning Millennium Tower. Which is terrifying for the residentials. And this tower by no means is cheap. A penthouse unit was sold back in 2016 for $13 million. Many star athletes and retired Google employees have bought an apartment here before realizing that due to some errors during construction, the infamous Millennium Tower is sinking and tilting three inches, which is around 7.5 centimeters every year. According to the engineers, if the tilting continues at the current rate, soon the elevators and plumbing may stop working in the luxurious 58-story building. Engineers are working day and night to solve this riddle and put a full stop to the ongoing tilt. But despite a $100 million plan to fix this, the tower has not failed to tilt and draw lawsuits from the residents. Hello and welcome or welcome back to our channel. In this video, we will be discussing how this tilting and sinking tower is keeping engineers standing on their toes and how they are racing against time to save the Millennium Tower. Open to fanfare in 2009, the tower made headlines as more than 400 apartments of it were sold out in no time for a reported $750 million in total. The obsession that people had with this tower was skyrocketing, and it continued to grow stronger and stronger to the point that the people who bought the apartment first were selling it for a three times higher price. Known for its luxurious residential units and impressive architectural design, the tower is slender and each floor of the tower contains 14,000 square feet, which is around 1,300 meters of floor space. In addition to the 58-story tower, there is a 125-foot, 11-story tower on the northeast end of the complex. Between the two towers is a 43-foot, two-story glass atrium. In total, the project has 419 units. The bottom 25 floors of the main tower are known as residences, while the floors from 26 to the top are called grand residences. And the one common thing that all the skyscrapers have is also present here. Because of triskaidekaphobia, the fear of the number 13, there is no 13th floor in this building, and neither is there a 44th floor because the number 4 is considered unlucky by many Asians. The 53 units built in the separate 12-story tower are called city residences. Below street level, there are 434 parking spaces in a 5-level subterranean garage located under the 11-story tower. The building is located next to the site of the Transbay Transit Center. During the marketing phase, the tower was said to have a resemblance with a translucent crystal, and was a landmark for the Transbay redevelopment and the southern skyline of San Francisco until many much larger buildings were built. The list of luxuries that this multi-million worth tower offers is long. The service provided to residents includes a private concierge and access to the 20 square foot owner's club level, which features amenities such as a private lounge, wine cellar, and fitness center. In addition to this, the development's lifestyle program organizes cultural events. The development accommodates the International Smoke Restaurant and Bar located on the ground floor. Apart from being known for the luxury it offers and the absurdly high prices of the apartments, the building is also famous for being home to many famous personalities, such as legendary 49 ER's quarterback Joe Montana and the late venture capitalist Tom Perkins, who owned one of the building's penthouses, specifically a 5,500-square-foot 5 property with a variety of unconventional elements. But unfortunately, the fate of this tower was not glamorous enough to match the flashing, luxurious apartments worth multi-million per square foot. By the year 2015, the developers already started noticing that the building is sinking and tilting, but the crucial information was not disclosed to the public until the next year. In the year 2016, it was disclosed by the developers that it has been discovered that the building has sunk 16 inches deep into the soft soil and landfill of San Francisco's dense financial district. Following this, 
many lawsuits were filed by the residents, stating that the apartments that were worth more than $5 million a few years ago have become worthless now. As of today, the residents of the building are trying to sell their apartments even if it makes them lose millions of dollars. And ever since the news of the tower tilting and sinking has been disclosed, the price of the apartments is falling continuously, becoming a major concern for the people who invested in it. And that is how the building which once won awards for its phenomenal structure and bagged the American Concrete Institution Award for Construction and the Structural Engineering Project of the Year is now known as the San Francisco's own Tower of Pisa. But despite the criticism that the developers and the engineers faced, they have made constant efforts to save the tower and are doing their best, keeping the constant tilting and sinking in mind. On December 4th, 2018, Ronald Hamburger, the senior principal engineer at Simpson Gumpertz and Heger, revealed in a press release a final resolution to the Millennium Tower's tilting and sinking problem by underpinning the building. The proposed solution would have involved the installation of 52 piles along the north and west sides of the tower beneath the sidewalk that reached down 250 feet into the bedrock of downtown San Francisco and be tied with the original 60 to 90 feet deep foundation piles. At that time, it was estimated that this solution will reverse about 50% of the tilt over 10 years, as the south and eastern sides of the building would come back into realignment with the now sunken north and western sides of the building, at which point the remaining south and eastern sides of the building can be anchored to the bedrock, permanently resolving the tilting and sinking of the building. And with the promise of reversing the tilt, the perimeter pile upgrade project began in the year 2020, which included a $100 million scheme for fixing the building and a plan to compensate homeowners in the building for estimated losses. But despite such efforts, the tilting and sinking of the tower did not stop. And unfortunately, work to reinforce the building's foundation was stopped in August 2021, after engineers discovered the building had sunk an additional inch in the months since the attempted repairs had begun. The reason behind this is the excessive soil movement which took place after the engineers started installing 52 piles into the bedrock. As of today, the total tilt at the top of the building is 26 inches, which is 5 inches more after an inch of tilt at the bottom took place. And if we look at the reports and satellite images, it is said that the tower will continue to sink at a rate of 2 inches per year, which is double of what the engineers estimated earlier. But the problems for the residentials don't stop here. The tower's unsteady footing has triggered a series of other issues, which has made the residents go frantic. These issues include cracks in the basement, declining home value, accusations of fraud, and numerous legal battles. Residents have also complained of bad odor in their units, floors bubbling up from moisture, cracked walls, and a giant fissure in the window on the 36th floor. And if this was not enough to tarnish the name of the Millennium Tower, in March 2023, the San Francisco Fire Department, as well as numerous first-hand witnesses, reported panes of glass falling from the tower during a windstorm. Though no injuries were reported, falling off these panes and shattering near pedestrians on Mission Street raised concerns among the local people. But what is the underlying problem here? Why is it appearing as unsolvable to the engineers? The problem lies in the foundation of the tower itself. The Millennium Tower's foundation was constructed using a technique called friction piles, which involves drilling deep into the ground and filling the holes with reinforced concrete to create load-bearing supports. And it is an important part of laying down the foundation of a skyscraper, as for those of you who don't know, beneath the loose surface deposits of soil and sand sits a layer of lithified rock called bedrock underlying unconsolidated surface materials, this solid layer of earth is the first building block in constructing a sturdy foundation for skyscrapers. Without it, the building will lose its stability and support, creating space for the building to tilt and sink. It also plays a crucial role in seismic resistance, as the bedrocks provide a stable platform that can distribute seismic energy more evenly and reduce the building's vulnerability to shaking during an earthquake. However, the engineers who made this tower opted to lay the foundation of this building on soft soil instead of reaching bedrock. 
And because the piles were only driven into soft soils and mud in the area, they could not provide the necessary stability and support for the building. Adding to this, the site's geological conditions also played a crucial role in the tower's sinking and tilting issues. A known fact is that San Francisco sits in a seismically active region, and the soils in the area are known to be prone to settling and consolidation over time. And as a result, because of a minor mistake of not drilling to the bedrock, the weight of the building was pushed down on the soft soil and distributed unevenly. And at the end of the day, all of these factors added and caused the building to tilt and sink. Another issue that is bugging the residents is the blame game that is being played by everyone involved in this case. The developer of the tower and the engineering firms involved in its construction are pointing fingers at each other regarding the design, construction, and foundation choices that led to the sinking and tilting issues. The debate on what should have been done in the first place is keeping people busy which is preventing them from coming up with a real solution. With the development, the developer is blaming the sinking problem on the Transbay Joint Powers Authority, TJPA, which was responsible for the construction of the neighboring Transbay Transit Center, TTC. But the sinking problem started ages before TTC construction even broke ground, and TJPA asserted the building had already settled 10 inches, well past the original maximum vertical settling prediction of 5.5 inches in 20 years by the time TJPA began removing the timber piles under the prior Transbay Terminal in 2011. But what appears to be good news is that on June 21, 2023, the Millennium Tower announced that engineers and construction workers have succeeded in stopping the 58-story Soma high-rise from tilting and sinking. According to the officials, workers have completed installing 18 concrete piles 275 feet into the bedrock below the lavish tower at 301 Mission Street. And as expected, the piles have transferred 18 million pounds of weight off of the building's original foundation, relieving stress on soils that have compressed beneath the building and caused its years-long structural issues. Officials said the project, dubbed the Perimeter Pile Upgrade, has recovered nearly one inch of tilt so far and will continue to recover more in the coming months and years. Although they didn't say when the building's tilt will be fully corrected, it's still a good start. On the same day, the lead engineer, Ronald Hamburger, said, As an independent team of engineering experts concluded, this is an effective and practical approach to the settlement and tilting issues, and it preserves and enhances the building's safety. Sharing the positive news, he also added, We look forward to completing the final steps of this project. By the looks of it, the $100 million installation, which began in November 2020, is expected to be fully completed by the end of August. According to the engineers working on the project, the final goal of the project includes the installation of vaults and the restoration of muni lines, sidewalks, and landscaping on Fremont and Mission Streets. And that was it for today's video. Hope you liked it. And if you did, make sure to leave a like and comment telling us your views on the whole Millennium Tower case.